Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Art 196, um, Introduction to Designing Web Graphics for the Spring Semester 2022. Um, today, I'll be continuing to talk about HTML a little bit, just for a few minutes. And you should also be working on Lesson 3, which is the CSS, an introduction to CSS, Cascading Style Sheets. And I will show you in a few minutes how, when those styles are applied, what your website can look like, um, which is what the lessons are about. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I'm going to switch back over to Wix. And I'm um, having better success with that um, this morning. And again, I'm hopeful that because I'm recording in the cloud, that we won't have any sluggishness. Um, I'm wondering if that's, again, just dawn on me that um, sometimes I don't have any issues and sometimes I do. So maybe that's, that's part of the problem. So <clears throat> back to HTML, <clears throat> I showed you on Tuesday how to work with a basic text edit program to build a basic HTML page that can be open in any browser. If we <clears throat> um, start with a new file in um, Dreamweaver, which is the principal program that we'll be using in here. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll close this one and go file new. And I just want a simple HTML page. That's it, HTML5. You can go back to earlier iterations of HTML. I don't recommend it. Stick with HTML5, okay? That's kind of the, the lay of the land right now. So I'll go ahead and I'll click create. And we have a blank page. Probably what you would want to do in what I like doing in Dreamweaver is making sure that I'm looking at it in a split view. Um, from time to time, you may want to look at it solely in a live view or sometimes only in a code view. But usually, my usually go to is um, a split view. But now that I have it in the code view, you can see, remember I was talking about that sandwich metaphor the other day? Um, well, here it is. They have structured a basic web page for you. Um, that code is all ready to go. When I view it in split view, I can either edit the page in code view or I can edit in live view. So now you can see that as soon as I click, the body tag is selected, the little box that's defined for the body. <clears throat> And we can go ahead and I can begin to type in here. So I can say, welcome. Oh, come on. To my first web page. And if I hit the return key, for the next line, notice it automatically added the, the paragraph, paragraph break that I was talking about. Um, web design can be fun. And sometimes, let's go ahead and I'm gonna put, and in here I'm gonna put a few spa spaces. And notice what it's doing. It's adding those um, <clears throat> non-breaking spaces that I talked about the other day. Sometimes um, easy. So there you have it. Now I need to edit that or change it. So let's say, for example, I wanted welcome to my first website to be larger. I wanted to emphasize that. So now I could come down here to format. Right now, you'll notice that it's, and I'm, I'm showing this in the paragraph or in the properties panel, and it shows it as a paragraph tag. Well, I can, well, while that's selected, I can go ahead and highlight that and let's make it an H1 tag as I did before. And that enlarges it. If you want to change the size of an H1 tag, and using CSS, you can do that. And we will be doing that in the future lessons. Also, I said that, for example, if I highlight fun, 
Okay, and I come down to the properties panel again. I can go ahead and I can, let me go ahead and I wanna make it, well, maybe I am, they've, they've changed this a little bit. So I can't make it bold. So what I'll do is I'll just do it in the code view. So I'll go ahead and I'll add my strong tag. So it shows you how we can, if I wanted it bold, I would do that in CSS. So I'll go ahead and I'll add the, the um, strong tag in code view. And there's the opening tag. Let's go ahead and put the closing tag. Notice that after I added the, the opening tag, it, it knew what I wanted and it added this, the, um, <clears throat> the closing tag. And likewise, um, I can't spell easy either. That's easy. Yes, why? So now I can go ahead and I can highlight the word easy. Okay. And let's go ahead and look in here. And I'm, and I'm going to go ahead and because it's not showing properly, um, let me go ahead and just click on this. Oh, because I'm in code view. Let me switch to split view. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and it looks a little bit different. I, because I was in code view, I had to add it totally in code. But notice that I can um, go ahead and make add an M tag for the easy. And I could go back to the fun if I wanted to and highlight it. And right now you can see that it's bold. I can turn bold off. So it's kind of like working in a, a text editor or um, a word processor, but not quite. If you want a very basic website like I'm doing now, I can enlarge this a little bit. Um, this is what you would get. Okay. So later, though, we're going to dress it up a bit. We want our websites to look a little bit more inviting, a little bit more dynamic. So if I switch to our about page, this is the finished version. Um, I can look at it again as uh, the with all of the CSS intact. And if I want to edit the CSS, I would go to CSS Manager. And you can see that what we have here, we have, as we begin to build our websites, we're going to go ahead and we will have add bootstrap CSS elements. That's pretty much how we get our interactive um, uh, nav bar. And there's a few other elements later in the semester that we will be adding, but that's the principal um, reason for using Bootstrap um, so that you don't have to be involved in heav heavily coding anything. And we will be adding our own styles here. And when we look at the styles, okay, I can see down here that as I click on green styles, <clears throat> I can, th this is broken down into different areas or sections. Okay. So if I want to see what styles I've added to the default settings for the nav bar, I click here. And if I say that I want to show set, I can do that. And you can see that I've added a background color and a background gradient. So if I want to remove the gradient, I can. If I want to turn it off, so here's the background image. Let me go ahead and let's uh, let's hide that. Let me, you know what? Let me look at the um, the header. That will be easier to do. So let's look at header. I'm going to go ahead and find it in here. I'm going to go ahead and find header. So let's go ahead and just say header row. And again, I'm I'm looking at all the um, the styles that we've applied to this. Now, if I look under um, the background image, you can see that I have a background color. And we've added an image here. If I want to delete that image, I can. And I'll click there and it should go, go away. Come on. And let's change, turn the background color off. So for whatever reason, the background image is, oh, I added that in the code view for that. Okay. 
So there are a variety of ways of, of editing it and customizing it. So let me undo a couple of steps. Let's go back. Um, let's look at some of the other styles that we can add. So let's look at the sidebars. So here we have, for example, sidebar two. When I click it, you'll notice that it sort of highlights in blue. And we will be adding all of these um, styles. And you'll notice that the background color is this light green. We've also specified um, padding. Um, when you read the chapter on CSS, you'll understand a bit more about padding and you'll understand more about margins, which are important. For example, if I wanted on the left and the right in the padding, I wanted a bit more um, space, I could go ahead and put in here. Let's go ahead and put, um, just to exaggerate this, I'm going to put in on the left side, 30 pixels. And as soon as I do that, let's see what happens here. Not a whole lot, because that's pushed to the max. So let me go back to the 10 again. Let's try the background color. If I wanted to change that and make it a yellow, I could do so. And there, now I have a background color of yellow. Now, <clears throat> the reason why CSS has been adopted um, is that what we can do is just as we have these style sheets that are attached to our page, um, we can go ahead and we can attach these style sheets to other pages as well. So all of the heavy lifting for us in our lessons is done in the first six, seven chapters of the book. After that, chapters um, eight, nine, um, and 10 and 11, um, especially lesson nine, are showing you different ways of adding content to the pages. In lesson um, 10, we kind of go back to working with images again. Um, in eight, we learn how to create templates. In lesson 11, we learn how to link these pages to um, other pages used in the nav bar. Um, in lesson 12, we add a little bit of um, using, again, bootstrap components, adding a bit of interactivity to the website. But that, this is what CSS does. It, it's totally stripped out, separate from you know, the, the HTML, and it clearly organizes the page, and it styles it into something that's a little bit more interesting for us. And again, if we click on any part of these elements, um, we can always go back to, um, oh, this is controlled. I know why I couldn't change that. Because this is controlled, again, by a template. And that gives us editable regions and non-editable regions. That's why I couldn't change those paddings. So what I would have to do, and uh, silly me, let me go ahead and go back and open the template. So I'm going to go ahead and open. And I want to open, let's go ahead. I'll just do it from here. I'm going to go back to files and I'm going to scroll down to close images up. Let's look at our templates. There's templates. So let's go and open up the template. So what this allows us to do when you create templates is to create a, a basic format and structure for your page and styling. And then each child page that's, that's derived from that is linked to this template. It is based on the template. And that you generally have three editable regions. And that's it, at least in our lessons. We have the left and the right side in the main content. The nav bar, the header, and the footer are, in fact, um, locked. And if you want to change them in any way, and that's where I can go back to the CSS designer. Remember, I said, let's go back to, um, let's go back to the header again. Okay, and I'm going to go back to, let's make sure that I have green style selected, header, and let's select header row. 
to see what I have here. So here's the set and here's the background color for our page. And here's the image that we have for that. We have the image, the background image, and some of it is also added. Here's the image for the fern. So if I wanna replace that with another one, I can. Uh, also, um, what we will be doing is we'll be adding some uh, background images in the code ourselves. There is a separate um, sheet for the code. If I switch to C, um, Bootstrap CSS, and we look down here and I look at this just in the code view, this is the code that, that it automatically writes for us, but we will be going in and editing some of it for the um, for our page. Um, here are all the buttons, here are all the input, here's all the field set. Um, that's for all sources, that's bootstrap. Um, you can change these you know, by hand, or you can use what's best is just to use the CSS that we create. Okay, so here's what we're changing here. So you'll notice here in um, the, he the header again, um, that's, let's see for the background, header row P, header row, here we go. So here's the image for the fern. And here's the image for the stripe. We had to add these by hand. We can also change the repeat factors. We can change the size. We can change the um, positioning of it. We can do that all from here, or we can do that over here. So that allows us to do all that, okay? So let me go back to my first page. Let's go to about. And there we have it. So I was able to change this down here because these are the three editable regions. I would have to go back to the Dreamweaver template in order to change the other regions that we have locked down for the time being. So there you have it, a little bit of rundown of CSS and what that will be doing for us. Adding backgrounds, styling the text, styling the images, organizing the page into one, two, or three column formats, making it compatible with different sizes so that it is in fact, um, um, uh, works with different screen sizes. So notice that when I change it to um, a format that would be used for a tablet, it, it, the format changes to a two column. And when I go all the way down to, um, uh, the size for a phone, smartphone, it changes it again, and now it switches to a one column format. Okie doke. And that, for example, most of that is done for us with Bootstrap. And then we just change the configuration and the appearance of it to a large extent, um, creating our own style sheet that lays on top of it. Okay. So I'm gonna switch again. And I'm gonna to go to, <clears throat> there we go. I'm going back to Wix and I presume everybody can see me. So this is what I had started the other day, um, created a template. Um, and you'll notice that I've been able to, now that my computer is working correctly, I can go into this and I can um, add my own images. Notice that they still have a couple of there. So let's go ahead and remove those and add mine. So if I click in here, I can go ahead and I can manage media. So these are those three images. If I want to instead, um, I'm going to go ahead and add media. So I'm going to go ahead and add another image of mine. Okay. So I need to go ahead and I don't want to add that one. I want to go to add to page. Let's go to uh, media types, create a new folder, actions, create, no, I don't want to do that. These are our site files. I need to upload media. So it's a matter of just hunting and pecking around here and finding what you want. So I'll go ahead and I'll upload from my computer, just as I'd done before. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick, let's see. Um, I'm going to look at this in C 
columns so I can see which image that I'm bringing in here. So let's see. Let's go ahead and let's select this one. I'm going to go ahead and open this one up. So it's uploading the image. Today it's going a little bit faster. There we go. We've added our image. I can say, go ahead and I can add to page. It's added it. Now I can just simply click on here and change the order of it. If I don't want these anymore, I can click on them in this little button here and I can select to remove. If I want to add more, I can. If I want to reposition them, okay, just click on a single image and move it and change the order. So I'm going to go ahead and for right now, I'm going to remove this one. So I, I've removed all of their. Um, so I'm, I'm done with that. So you can see that I have mine now. And notice that it says, well, it says um, gallery image for web number two. So um, if I want to change that, I just simply click on this again. And I get, go ahead and manage media. Go back in and notice that um, we say, when I click on this image, it's getting the title for this from the file name. Well, I can go back and I can set this and I'll just say um, virtual virtual um, one. Okay, so this will be that done. And now you can see that the text has changed. If you want to manage the size of the text, the font, then instead of managing the media, we can go ahead and we can click on this and we can manage the settings, okay? So we can manage the main setting, we can manage the layout, we can um, change anything we want in here. If I double click on here, um, no, it just opens that back up, my mistake. So let's go back and let's look at some of the other features in here that we can add and change. Um, instead of, Illustrator and graphic designer, I'm going to say fine artist, conceptual artist. So I'll go ahead and I'll click edit the text. And I can go ahead and I can change that and I'll say conceptual artist. Okay, so I'm done. So we can go ahead and change that. Now that's changed. If I go, want to go back into that, I can select it again. And if I want to get edit the text, I can go from here and I can change it from a heading two to a heading one. So the, you'll, the terminology that you'll be learning with the heading tags is used here as well. It's universal. We can change the font size from here. If I want to make it bold, I can do that. If I want to italicize it, I can do that. If I want it underlined, I can do that. You can control whether it's flush left, flush, flush right, um, it's up to you. These are all the different settings that are built into each of these. For example, you'll notice that they change that these are the links to different pages here. So if I wanna go ahead and um, edit this, I can either delete this or I can change the text. So instead of, I have a Pinterest, a LinkedIn, and what else do I have? Um, I don't have, on my website, I don't have many anymore. I'm not on most of those. So, um, oh, Twitter. So let's go ahead and change. Let's go ahead and edit this. So I'm going to change the text. Click in here. And by changing the text, instead of Behance now, I can put in Twitter. And then you'll notice though that they linked this button to their Behance website. I need to put in my own Twitter account here. So now I need to go in and I specify whether I, you know, this will be a web address. Do I want it to go to a new page? Do I want it to go to the top or the bottom of the page? Another doc, open up a document. Um, it gives you all of these options here. 
Um, here, though, is where I will put in the link to my Twitter account so that that link is updated. I'm not done that. Now I can close that. And you can see that I have Twitter. If you have an Instagram account, they have an account. They have a lot of these built in. If you don't need to use them, delete them. If you need to add them, add them. Um, you'll notice that the layout, if we look down here in um, layers, you can see how they have structured the page. Um, if we look at the, the page itself, you can, uh, you can click on the, um, let's see, we can click on the header. So here's the top strip for the header. And it's broken down into two columns. Do you want more columns? OK. You can. We can add another column to that. If we go down the page, the main page, you can see, again, what strips they've added. They've added column one and column two. And then beneath that, they added the Wix Pro Gallery. So if you want to switch that to another element that they have, you can. And so this is following the basic format that I talked about the other day, that you start with an, the header and the, the nav bar can be interchangeable in their, their placement, but generally they go from, you know, it goes from top to bottom. That's how they load in how these elements load in your browser um, from top to bottom, left to right. So we can go ahead and close the header and look and look at the page. And we have the Wix gallery. If you want that, something else in place of that, you can do that. And again, here's the footer. So if we look at the footer now and we look at the strip of the footer, you can see that they have broken it down into three columns. Now they make it really easy for you. When we do the lessons, you'll see that when you build the pages from the ground up, it's much more difficult. Um, but once you get it finalized and built in the lessons, um, then all the heavy lifting is done. Then from there on out, when you're designing your websites in Dreamweaver, you can use those templates as, a, as building blocks to create new pages, new styles, and so on and so forth. So now I can come down here and I can change the footer design from here. So I can go into settings. So if I want to freeze the footer, I can. That means that it will always stay at the bottom. I can change um, the text here. Again, anytime you hover over any of these elements, they allow you to click and then um, decide for yourself what you want to do. Do you want to change the layout? Do you want to change the design? Do you want to animate it? Do you want to add a link to this? OK. So um, normally, I wouldn't have my name here in the footer. I would have links to my um, uh, social media, and I would also have copyright information. It's also kind of nice, too, to have this um, link here that will take us back up to the top of the page. So I'll just go ahead and select this, and I'm going to go ahead and delete it. If I want to add it, I could go back and I can add it. It doesn't take the page away. Then when we're done with all of this, I can go ahead and let's turn layers back off. We can go back off of this. Um, the next step would be to save it. Okay, so we'll save it. And we're going to save it to the to our website. It says it's done. And now we can go ahead and preview it first. So it gives us a preview of how this is going to look. Notice that we have this little button down here. It takes us back up to the top of our page. And we can go to the projects page. This is what they have designed for us. So if you have, you know, if you, for those of you who are art majors and you've taken painting and drawing courses, you've taken um, graphic design courses, you've taken computer graphics courses, these could be th three separate categories that um, you could take your, your person to, the, the end user. Okay, so I can close that. We can go back to, um, let's go to info, which is, uh, the same as your about page. 
So if this works for you, this layout, um, again, I can come back in here and it already has updated because again, the, uh, the, the header for the page, because this remains constant from page to page, but I can come in here and I can change. Um, let's go back to, I don't wanna publish. Let's go back to editor. Okay. And um, now I can go back to this page instead of viewing it in its finished format and I can click on, no, it didn't go back to editor. Why not? Come on, there we go. Now I can click on it. There we go. Am I still in there? No, it's not taking me back. Why not? I don't want to, oh, well, let's go back here. There we go. Let's go back to editor. Let's go back to edit site once again. Takes a minute to load. Moses does its thing. There we go. So we're back to where we were. So now what I want to do is uh, I need to go to that page. So what I can do is if I want to add or I want to edit, let's go to menus and pages. And you can see that we these are all the pages that have been added here. So if I want to go to my info page, I can do that. So I'll go ahead and I don't want to delete it. I just want to go to that page. I'll go ahead and I'll close it. And now I can select the image and I can change this with another one, okay? Um, you can go in here and they've already set everything up for you um, so that you can put your name, put again, put what it is you're specializing in. Here's a little paragraph about yourself. If you want have any clients or wanna give sort of a resume, here's your contact information already set up. Just remember to go back in though, when they have email addresses, that you change the link so that it goes to your email, not their default. Okay. The same with the subject, you know, and the message and submit, because this submit button needs to make sure that you go back in and it will be submitted to you. So if I go into settings, Okay. It should have a link here and link it to an external URL or um, go to a page or light box or show the file and a download. You can um, change all those settings, but just by clicking on the little buttons here. So as you kind of navigate through here and you, um, <clears throat> as I'm doing at the moment, um, every time there's a new template to follow, you have to kind of um, hunt and peck your way through it in order to, um, to navigate through the pages. Um, if I wanna add an element here or add a page, I can do that. So here's a strip to add. If I wanna add text, I can do that. If I wanna add an image, I can do that. If I wanna add buttons, decorative elements, um, you name it, they have everything here. Um, music, videos, social media icons, whatever works for you. Um, take your time to look through them and see what's available. And you'll come up with something pretty interesting, I think. So if I go back over here to my site, let's go back to site. Um, I'll go ahead and save. Site saved, there we go. So let's go to save, let's go to site. Um, I'm gonna go back to Wix itself and look at my other website. So you can see the basic one that I've set up. So this is my site here. Let's look at other sites that I have here. I want this site. 
show up. Sometimes it will, you know, it will take you a good afternoon, a good day to familiarize yourself with Wix. It will um, take you a little while to decide on what template to choose. And, you know, in a, in a few days, it, you'll get all up and running um, and it will be set to go. So let's go ahead and view this site. So I'll edit the site. This is the one that I have for myself that I did this last semester. So they allow you to have multiple sites, which is really kind of nice. So if you have multiple interests or you want a separate website, um, you can. So here's the, the website that I set up here. Um, this has a little slideshow. It has an about page and it has contact. So if I want to preview this to see how this works or edit it, I mean, right now or publish it again, it's all published online. So when you've finished this, what you'll do is you will um, email me the link to your website, which will be up here. Now, this is not published yet. So um, but you can see that I can go ahead and I can view this. Here's my slideshow. If I want to look at my about page, so this is previewing in the in the um, um, in a browser. They have, and here's my contact information. Very basic. That's all I'm asking you to do is a very basic website. Website, but make sure that you add your own images and your own content. Now, if I go back to if I go ahead and I publish this, let's go ahead and publish. Okay, it's done. And now I can go back and I can go to my web, web, Wix website and we can hold on here. I'm telling you how easy it is. And then I goof up here. So let me go to home. And it is Kirk Miller. Uh, no, no, no. That's email. Um, I'm hunting and pecking myself because I want quick access. Um, oh, here it is right here. It's um, HTTPS colon um, backslash backslash Kirk Miller art dot Wix site dot com slash my site hyphen one. So if I click on there, it will take me to a browser that I have open and I currently have Firefox open. And you can see that this is what it looks like in its published format. The only downside to this, and it's really a minor downside, is that because we are using their service for free, um, you get this little ad up at the top here. This, is, this site was designed with the Wix.com website builder. Create your own website today. So to test websites, to start out, to see how things are working, um, um, if you want um, to have multiple websites um, and not have to pay an arm and a leg, then this is kind of the way to go. It's really pretty nice. So that's pretty much what I wanted to cover today. Um, finish the overview of HTML and give you an introduction to CSS and um, go over Wix a little bit more. So if that's it, if there aren't any questions, um, any questions before we leave today? Paula, Mark? No? OK, then I'll pause the recording. Went a little bit smoother today. And I will um, make sure that this is published. And if you need an individual um, webinar, um, then please let me know. Okay, so I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to pause, pause.